Welcome to our Wednesday Bible Discussion, Speaking Words of Life, Our Dear Jesus. Our Dear Jesus, Wonderful Savior, shines His light through our darkest nights. And when we stray, He guides our way home again, home again. Our dear Jesus, precious Savior, when the floods of life's waters got us drowning, he comes to storm with his standard and the words, come on home, just come on home. Our dear Jesus, what a Savior. When my sins have stained and shamed your wonderful name, gently says, I'll bear the shame. Just come on home, come back home. I know your words that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. Revelations 3, 15 through 16. Hey, beloved people of God, beloved of Christ, we're talking about lukewarm Christianity. In Revelations 3, 15 and 16, the church in Laodicea had become lukewarm and thus distasteful and repugnant. The believers did not take a stand for anything, and their indifference led to idleness by neglecting to do anything for Christ. The church had become divided, hardened, and self-satisfied, and it was destroying itself from within. There is nothing more disgusting to God than a half-hearted Christian who is self-sufficient. People of God, don't settle for following God halfway. Let Christ Jesus fire us up. He fires up our faith and gets us into action, back in the race. Amen. Many speakers talk about the pursuit of godly wisdom and knowledge, but often we don't want God's wisdom or knowledge. They want control and power. Such people won't listen to sound and wholesome teaching. Instead, they reject the truth and then build and chase after myths. You can see this everywhere, from liberal churches to university campuses. People claiming to have a bit more enlightenment than what the dusty old Bible has to say. People claiming to improve on God's words. Such people have several things in common. They do not tolerate truth. They have no interest or respect for absolute truth or any standard for judgment. They reject truth for sensationalism. They want truth that fits their situation and makes sense for them. What they feel and what works for them, what seems compelling is their truth. And they claim an absolute right to it nowadays. Amen. No one should even attempt to tell them differently. They gather viewpoints that suit their selfish desires, whatever their itching ears want to hear. These people are following myths. Be careful that you're following the real thing, the truth, the gospel of Jesus Christ. False teachings can be found in many places, even inside the doors of some churches. So we must keep a clear mind in every situation and seek God's word 
for the truth. It must be the final authority in our lives. Again, today, people of God, we're here talking about lukewarm Christians. And I would like to start off by saying most of the people in churches today are lukewarm, false converts. People always ask, am I, luke am I a lukewarm Christian? Sometimes the person is just a weak, immature believer. Then other times, a person is just lukewarm and has one foot in the church and the other foot in the world and falsely thinks that they are saved. You hear me, people of God? I would like to add as well that sometimes even the strongest Christians can lose zeal or backslide, but they won't remain in that state. Because God will discipline them and bring them into repentance. People of God, beloved of Christ Jesus, repent of your sins and believe on the Lord Christ today and you shall be saved. Many will go before God and they will be denied access to heaven and God's wrath will be upon them. How to recognize the signs of becoming a lukewarm Christian. People that only come to God when they have a problem or their Christianity is based on what God can do for them. How can he make our lives better? They don't obey the word of God or even and even try to twist the scriptures to justify their sin. They call obeying the Bible legalism or radical. They think they are Christians because they do good deeds or go to church. Yet they have lived like devils six days out of the seven days a week and are holy on just the one day, Sunday. They compromise with the world because it's the easiest choice for self. They have no repentance. They are not truly sorry for their sins. And they do not want to change. They think they're saved because they compare themselves to others around them. They never or rarely share their faith with others. They care more about what other things rather than what Jesus thinks. They are not willing to make sacrifices. If they do make sacrifices, it will be close to nothing and it won't affect them at all. They love to say things like, don't judge me. The word of God says that you are either cold or hot. I wish you were either one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, this is what Jesus is saying, neither hot or cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. Even though the word of God says that everything lukewarm will be cast into hell, they refuse to listen to God's word. Mm. Hebrews 10 and 26 says, if we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sin is left. And James 4.4 4 says something like, don't you realize that friendship with the world makes you an enemy of God? I say it again, if you want to be a friend of the world, you make yourself an enemy of God. Uh, I'm going to leave you with some reminders today. Uh, lukewarm Christians don't want to deny themselves. They don't want to pick up their cross. Remember, you can't change God's DNA to your DNA. But you can exchange your DNA for God's DNA. If you claim the Holy Spirit lives in you, inside you, then start acting like it. 
When you are lukewarm, the devil can trust you more than God can. Ooh. And the devil doesn't trust that you won't turn on him and run back to God. God can't trust you to keep the secrets and mysteries of heaven. God can't trust you that you won't allow the enemy to pervert the gifts he gives you. And Matthew 16, 24 states, Then Jesus said, to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Beloved, if you have heard, thus says the Lord, and you want to repent, get up and go tell a dying world that because Jesus lives, that they are forgiven, restored. And delivered by God's grace. God is not wishy-washy. He's not a flip. He doesn't flip flop. Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. The world tells us that God's the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. That means that when we do things that, are dis that dishonor God or Jesus, God's wrath burns against us. It's just because of Jesus seated at the right hand of God, making a plea to God on our behalf, always interceding for us. We do a lot of things that we need to stop in order to get closer to God, in order to empty ourselves, our flesh of itself, to let make it die off. Talking about one another, things we need to stop doing, talking about one another, even cursing one another. Envy, being malicious, talking about beating up folks, thinking we're better than others. These things, I don't believe we realize that it's against Jesus, which is the head of the body, the church. You might not condemn Jesus, but when you condemn each other, that's his body. Amen. I still hear his father uh, tell, I, mean, I, I still hear Jesus say, why have you, Jesus said to his father, why have you forsaken me? Because he bears our sins, he cannot at the moment be present with his father. You understand, when he is making, you know, when he is making restitution for our sins, for that moment, he is absent from his father. What kind of love is that, that Jesus would just keep on doing it? So if God's spirit lives inside you, start acting like it, people of God. If you claim to have God's DNA, start acting like it, people of God. I'm going to be, uh, Ray is going to be leading us in a prayer for forgiveness. And if you heard any of these things and God has, you know, called your heart out for you to repent and stop being lukewarm. Stop being on the fence about this thing. But that you be wholeheartedly sold out. You're not going to make it in the last days. You won't last. You'll fall by the wayside or you'll be destroyed by the enemy. If you don't get this. And that's why every week we come to bring what thus says the Lord to you. Because that's what God has called us to do. Not a man, God has called us to do it. And so we will be doing this until Jesus come or we leave here. In Jesus' name, we love you. God bless you is our prayer. Right, lead us into prayer forgiveness. And say something like this. Lord, I've been living my life my own way. Now I want to live it your way. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that he died for my sins and rose from the dead. Please come into my heart and be Lord of my life. Lord, help me to be everything you created me to be. 
In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you, people of God. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. Have a good week. Goodbye.